What is going on, viewers? Welcome to a slightly abbreviated episode four of Brick Talk with KDX Bricks Analytics. Today, we're going to do some good set, bad set, and then we're going to talk later in the episode about how each of us are preparing for the end of the year Lego investing rush. Let's get into it. This is the just unveiled, not even released yet, 75367 UCS Venator, the set that Star Wars fans have wanted for decades. Obviously, you have the two minifigures, the Admiral Ularen and the Captain Rex. This set is 100 inches long, the exact same as the UCS Star Destroyer that just retired. And for those that remember, the Star Destroyer was a $700 retail price, now going on Amazon for over $1,000. So obviously we are talking about this set way too soon. I know we're trying to focus on the outgoing class of sets this year, but this set is amazing. It looks so good, so much better than the 11-year-old Playscale Chunky Venator that we got before. $120 going for over $500 now. It's clear that clone large $100 vehicles tend to do pretty well. If we we look at UCS Clone Wars vehicles. We have the Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter from about 2010, $100 set that has exploded in retirement. Of course, coming up this year on the retirement list, we have the UCS gunship. But I think the Star Destroyer has shown us that buyers are willing to pay over MSRP for a $700 set. We'll have to see how the UCS gunship does. But if it does well, I anticipate the UCS Venator being an amazing Lego investment come about 2027. What are you thinking? This set hasn't even come out yet. We don't know the pop popularity. We don't know the shelf life. We really don't know much about this set. But you know what, David? I will tell you what you're thinking. You are thinking perfectly clearly. This set is a winner, winner, winner. The great thing about it, there's so much color. There's so much texture. There's so much to look at. That hasn't even hit the market yet. I'm sure that on release, there's going to be some hype. There's going to be buyers clamoring to get it, going over the MSRP, probably going as high as $1,000. I was kind of shocked that the price is only $650. $50. It's more pieces than the outgoing Imperial Star Destroyer. Of course, that one has some really large pieces. And the Venator is a little bit smaller. It's technically the same length, but it is a little bit narrower. And I'm not too sure about the height, but I think it might be a little shorter. But it crams in, I want to say, close to a thousand more pieces than the Star Destroyer. Considering the Star Destroyer launched in 2019, before LEGO bumped up all their prices, before inflation, before anything, I'm sort of shocked this isn't a thousand dollar MSRP. I think if LEGO was going to try and get a way with a thousand dollar price tag on a UCS set, this would have been the one to do it with. So honestly, this seems like a bargain at 650. And don't get mad at me if midway through this set's life, Lego bumps the price up because it yeah. just seems too good to be true. I could definitely see them raising it $50 or $100 like the UCS ATAT. -AT. You know, clearly this is going to have minimum two years, which would be crazy. It's clearly going to have at least a three year, four year shelf life. So other than just watching the buzz and the popularity, I wasn't going to get in on this set for at least a couple of years years. No reason to. But your point about if this set really is popular and of course Lego watching their sales and their bottom line and where the economy is going to go worldwide, we could see a price increase. So we would want to keep our eyes out. And if we think that's coming, we would want to pick it up before that would happen. So that does give us reason to watch this even in year one and year two. So it's a big risk. I would not pick this up day one or year one no. or even year two for investment. If you want it for yourself, of course, by all means, get the best price that you can. But but typically, it's such a tried and true formula. The set launches at full price. Somewhat through its life, it goes down to basically 20% off. I really could see this set bucking that trend and $650 being the cheapest we ever see this set for. I could see them raising it to $700. Maybe if they hold it around for a year three or a year four, bumping it up to $750. I am shocked that this is so relatively cheap for a UCS set. Because if there was any set that LEGO could gouge on, it would be this set. People have been asking for this literally for over 10 years. Yeah. Let's move on to our next set. All right, David. So for my first set, I also am picking a set that is just coming out, but mine's a little different. It's coming out and it's retiring at the end of this year. At least that's what everybody thinks. And it's this Millennium Falcon Holiday Diorama 40659. It's sounding like it's going to have a three month shelf life and it's 30 bucks for the 300 pieces and the three mini figures and a Porg and a BB-8. So it's a another diorama set. Emotionally, I like it. I want to build one for myself, but 
intellectually, there's part of me in the back of my head that just says, you know, this is sequel. It looks yeah. a little thin and flimsy. The minifigures are okay, but the characters aren't, you know, that exciting. And there are a couple of Christmas sweaters are nice. So I'm on the fence and I'm curious what you think. I, I wish that I wasn't sitting on the fence. And I wish I could tell you that for my first set, good set, bad set, but I don't have an answer. I do like that the characters are gathered around the table enjoying a nice dark nougat Christmas turkey the porg is a nice addition bb8 has been in a million sets the biggest thing this set has going for it are lego exclusivity yep. and a very short shelf life i yep. am quite confident this set is going to retire in three months at the end of the year it doesn't make sense for them to keep this around for another holiday season price per piece is not bad the size is a little bit small like you say the sweaters look really good but if we just look at the sequel trilogy sets, these are not popular characters. These are not valuable minifigures. The Darth Vader Christmas sweater, I think from last year's advent calendar, I'd be curious to look up that figure. I don't think that these sweaters are particularly highly valuable. It's always a balance of supply and demand. Supply is going to be very low on this one due to the things we just talked about. Is there demand? Eh, would this have been better coming out? two or three or even four years ago, it seems strange for them to drop this right now. It would almost seem more appropriate for Lego in keeping with their diorama series to put some original trilogy characters here to have old Ben Kenobi and episode four Han Solo sitting around the table enjoying a turkey. This set is colorful. I may pick one up for myself because I do love Lego Christmas sets. But for investment, I'm going to tread very, very lightly with this one. I'm going to say it's a bad set. I'm going to go with good set. A lot of it is because of you and I both being less than enthusiastic about it. And when you add the short shelf life, the Lego exclusivity, and even you and me being not too enthusiastic about it, I bet you, like you said, that the supply is going to be not just low, but very low on the secondary market. I think that low supply is going to outweigh the low demand to where the demand will actually drive a decent price. And the reason I think that the demand is going to outdrive the low supply is because at the end of the day, it's still Star Wars. And it's still something a little different. And it's still kind of a cool little set for the $30. With this set being exclusive to Lego.com, I think it's fair to say we won't see any discounts on it, most likely. At the best, we might see a 20% discount. But it's not going to be possible to pick up this $30 set for $20, most likely. It's not going to stick around until the next May the 4th promotion. So anybody that does pick this set up for investment is going to be doing so, I'm guessing, at full price plus sales tax. So at $30, will this eventually fetch $60 maybe but then selling at 60 and seller fees is this this is just going to be garbage all right, Kevin, my next set is the City 60344 Chicken Hen House. This set retired at the end of last year, already nine months ago. If we go to Barnes & Noble, we can actually see this set is available for shipping. This is such a great value. It has a farmer minifigure, nice little four-wheeler there with the box on the back, many, many eggs, couple of different chickens, over 100 pieces. This set costs just $10, so for a City set, that's actually not a bad price per piece. If we look at how this set is selling on eBay right now, we can see pretty much going as high as $15, $19, doing pretty well for a set that's only less than a year retired. I'm curious to know what you think about this set. So this is actually one that I've looked at here and there. I haven't picked any up, but I absolutely think it's a good set. Just like a lot of us are very thankful that Lego still produces $10 sets and $20 sets and $50 sets and $100 and $200. You know, they've got the whole price range, right? So that way there's a whole array of options options for getting into Lego or enjoying Lego, depending on how much people want to spend. Well, same thing for investing. So although I probably don't want to go into that set, there are people that want to dabble in investing. And I think that some of these $10 sets, this one in particular, is a great way for people to get their feet wet, you know, just get some experience. And maybe the actual cash revenue on the investment is going to be low. But if you build some experience with getting high ROIs, then you can do duplicate that with increasingly higher value sets once you build that confidence. So I think this is an A plus set for people that want to get into uh, Lego investing and reselling and just get some experience under their belt. I haven't checked the Amazon price, but usually what I see with small $10 price point sets is that they maybe go for $20 on eBay, but $30 on Amazon. Yeah. And so if you do sell on Amazon, which I know is a minority of people who watch both of our channels, and if you're not going to be the one fulfilling your orders, packing up boxes just to net 
three dollars a sale well then this set starts to look a little bit better for investment yeah you're absolutely right i don't sell on amazon i am probably far far away from that my personal experience with this set is that i also love this set but given my own strategy again i have to maintain discipline and i have to stick to my strategy if i'm selling on ebay there's just no point for me with this set so with that in mind this is a good set but i did pass on it totally makes sense are right, you ready for my second set i'm gonna hit you with a second star wars set luke skywalker's red five helmet seven five three two seven retiring at the end of this year and i've always liked this helmet but i've also been cautious about it it's not an exclusive it's not a target exclusive or anything like that i've been cautious about it because i think a lot of people really think that the helmets are pure gold because of the little bit of history and i wonder when that opportunity is just going to fall off the cliff and we're all going to get caught with a bunch of helmets in our hands you know right at the last moment but the reason i like this helmet is because it's very unique these two two newer ones, Captain Rex and Commander Cody, they have a similar story as why I like the Red 5 is they look different. They have some color to them. This one, I don't like at all. But the older ones are mostly gray and black and white. And yeah, they look great, but they don't stand out a lot. Boba Fett is also unique in having some color. But the reason I'm bringing this one up and elevating it to good set and really good set is because all the rumors are that Lego is done making Star Wars helmets. These last few are it. I think we may have talked about this set on episode one, my same view holds true. I love this set. What you said about being colorful and standing out is pretty much exactly how I feel. $70 MSRP is a little bit steep, but this has been pretty widely available for around $55, $53. It's been so widely available for such a long time that I haven't gone in too deep yet. I'm waiting to see if I can get this set for under $50, maybe even around $45, because then that builds in such a good margin of safety for making money on this set. I love the printed dishes. I love the the trans orange eye goggle pieces. But... I knew we talked about it in the past. I just couldn't remember. And honestly, I don't remember who brought it up and who had good set, bad set on it. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any comments on where we were previously. But I did want to bring it up again because I am upgrading my rating on this set. Now that I know there are some pretty good rumors out there that Lego is done making sets in this sub theme. Yeah. And when I first brought this set up, I had in my mind that the helmet sub theme would continue for many more more years. If that is no longer the case, I don't think that hurts this set much. I still really like it. Maybe there'll be less buyers in 2024, 25, and 26 looking way back at the early helmets. But I still think as a series, the helmets are very cool, very collectible. We're just going to have to wait and see. All right, Kevin. Well, the theme of today's episode, the unofficial theme, must be original trilogy sets. We talked about the UCS Star Destroyer, we talked about the Red 5 helmet, iconic, of course, from the Death Star run. The next set I want to talk about, this is the 75339 Death Star Trash Compactor Diorama. This scene is very memorable. This diorama is a little bit small, especially for $90. You're going to have to get it on sale with six minifigures. Not very unique, not very many unique parts there. And while Lego keeps coming back to A New Hope and remaking scenes with cantinas, Star Destroyers, things like that, they may come back and remake the Trash Compactor into a playset, but it probably won't be quite the same with the same gearing mechanism to close it, with the same single size sided appeal of the diorama with the quote there on the front. One thing's for sure, we're all going to be a lot thinner. That's Harrison Ford. I can picture him saying that line. The first Star Wars movie just has so much great writing. I've said what I said. I think this is a great set and I think it's going to do pretty well for investment. 100% agree. Good set, great set all the way. You're absolutely right. These dioramas, they are not going to be made again in this form. So if you want a trash compactor diorama with this action feature, it's not happening again. Whereas if you want an next wing and you didn't get the last ones well just wait it'll it'll come yes the six minifigures aren't really that exclusive or that special but it comes with six minifigures absolutely it's a great set ninety dollars is way too expensive i own at least five of them maybe it's seven i was trying to get ten but a few of the boxes came super damaged and i wasn't able to get those replaced so i just returned them but i got them all i think for 56 if i remember wow that's a really good price this set's a walmart exclusive so it, you know it's not like everybody's gonna have it and the other 
another thing that's kind of good about this set that I at first complained about it when I saw this, but I've kind of turned the corner, is that it's a little bit ugly, <laughs> right? But it's supposed to be ugly because it's the trash scene. The reason I really like the Dagobah Jedi Trainer diorama scene is the second I looked at it, I felt like I was part of the scene. Whereas the other dioramas, I look at them and I feel like I'm seeing the scene. Well, the more and more that I look at this one, I'm starting to feel that same reaction that I am drawn in and part of this scene. So yes, this set is huge and awesome. Looking at the newer ones, the Endor Speeder Chase and the Emperor's Throne Room, those are very clean cut, especially the throne room, tiled off, very clean looking. I think this is going to be a nice contrast when we talk about also the helmets, the Red Five, providing a nice contrast of color with all the grayscale Imperial helmets. Same kind of thing might happen here with the trash compactor. So none of these have retired yet. We don't have comps to go on. Like you said, Kevin, this set is ridiculously overpriced. That's certainly going to hurt it. But for those that do get it at a decent price like you, I think this set is going to be a slam dunk investment. All right, David, next set, we're turning a page. New theme, Marvel. Marvel. Thor's hammer 76209 retiring at the end of this year about a year and a half shelf life 100 bucks right around a thousand pieces so that's okay very very cool set and I really don't know much about Marvel I've seen some of the movies and I know most of the characters but I don't have that strong personal connection but when I look at this set I definitely think that it looks super cool it's well done also a couple of side builds with the very small infinity gauntlet which you can put inside so a kind of an action feature to go with this which is great naturally marvel fans are going to want to be able to pick up thor's hammer in lego form and actually hold it and be like check this cool thing out right so i think there's a lot going for this set i think it is a good set that is flying under the radar and a big reason i think it's a good set is because there's a lot of sets that can go with it from a complementary perspective so we've got the infinity gauntlet here we've got the nano gauntlet here carnage and Venom. And then we've got a couple of the newer ones, the Wolverines, Adamantium Claws, and then this kind of weird pencil holder, <laughs> Star-Lord. What's interesting is that none of these sets are really getting a lot of buzz. Carnage a little bit because it was a Target exclusive. But when you put them all together, it's a nice little collection. There are diehard Marvel fans that are going to like that. And this one being another Target exclusive, I think it's a good set. I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. You know I stay far, far away from Marvel. There's just been too many duds in that theme. And like you, I don't have a personal experience with it. So I don't feel confident that I could pick winners the way I do with Star Wars a little bit. The short shelf life is nice. The target exclusivity. I see what you're saying that they go together as a series, but just in terms of desirability and demand, I just don't see it. I think the supply is going to be low on this hammer, but I think correspondingly, the demand is just never really going to pick up. I haven't even looked that seriously at this set. We'll throw up on the screen how it's doing on um, in terms of secondary market sales during its shelf life. I could be wrong on this one and I'm perfectly okay being wrong on this one. I'm going to steer far, far away from this one. I will say at $100, I think this set does give you a little bit more value than the other $70 helmet bust style sets. Like you said, the micro builds go inside of the main body of it. It comes with the minifigure. It comes with that dark bluish gray stand with the Mjolnir plaque there. There's actually a little uh, rubber looking hook at the end of the hammer. So it looks like you could hook it onto a peg or something like that hanging on the wall. That's all very cool. I'm, I am seeing the value proposition. If you can get it for $80, as we may have been able to a couple times with Target, that's the thing about these Target exclusive sets. They are very seldom on sale. And when they are, it's usually just for a week. If you miss that week, you may have missed your only chance to get the set on sale. So you have to be ready to jump on it. And uh, I will not be jumping anywhere near this set. We're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one. My last set for good set, bad set today is this, the 40174 Lego chess set. This set is exclusive to Lego, meaning you can only get it at lego.com and at Lego stores. $65 MSRP. Did I mention this set's exclusive? You cannot find this any place except directly from Lego themselves. Now, the downside with this set is that it has been available since 2017, making it one of the longest running Lego sets currently available. I think up there with the New York City skyline that's been available since 2016. And don't forget the Assembly Square modular building. Also a perennial <laughs> set that has duped investors many 
times with its fake retirement dates. If we look at LEGO chess sets, we can see there's a couple prior comps here. There's the Hogwarts Wizards chess from last year, 2022. That one's doing pretty well. We have the Pirates chess set from 2015. LEGO Pirates tends to do amazing, and this set is no different. Then you have a Bricklink Designer Program set, which isn't really much of a comparable, so we're going to throw that one out. Ever since Queen's Gambit came out and when people started spending a lot more time indoors on lockdown, the popularity of chess has absolutely taken off. I think that may be part of why LEGO has kept this set around so long. If we look here on LEGO.com, we can see there is a limit 20 on this set, which brings me to my next point, that this set is somewhat of an educational item. I think classrooms and schools and chess clubs, things of that nature, may be raising funds and directing some of their budget toward purchasing this LEGO set. And I think that after it's retired and the price starts to go up on the secondary market, we can see here on eBay, sort of a widespread here, but going for 75, one's going for 170, not too sure about that but 99, 65, 31 there, a bit of a low ball, 95, $769. We're going to throw that one out. But we can see this set is selling around, sometimes even above its MSRP. Pretty typical for Lego exclusives. If we look here on the very long stretching camel, camel, camel chart, again, going back to 2017, this set has sold up, down, left, right, sideways, but pretty much always over its MSRP, currently going for $95. I'm not sure this set has ever been available on sale. If it has, you can bet it's just been a Lego 20% off sale. So nobody has stacked copies and copies of this set at a cheap, cheap price. I do want to say that unlike the chess sets we talked about here, this set does not contain any minifigures. And so there's no desire there from buyers looking to get 16 minifigures, medieval castle style minifigures in one set that just doesn't exist here. And despite the amazing price per piece, it's a lot of small parts. And these brick built pieces, oh, hey, it comes with checkers too, are not going to be as, as desirable as pirate or Harry potter minifigures kevin your thoughts well i'll just come right out with it i'm gonna go bad set it pains me to go bad set i don't want to go bad set and i've actually looked at this one i've had a very similar thought process but the reason i'm gonna go bad set is because the long shelf life no minifigures but my caveat is that yeah chess is awesome it's gonna be around forever you know obviously so i'm saying bad set for investing but good set if you want to you know, take a flyer and you're willing to hold something for a pretty long time. Because I think that in maybe five to eight years, having an older unopened box of a Lego chess set, even if they come and produce a new one, I think would be very, very desirable by a number of people where, like you're saying, the supply is going to be extremely low in retirement. When we're investing, we're trying to be able to have a hold time of two to three years. Again, it pains me, but I think because of the long shot, Shelf life is going to be a very long hold time. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I'm going to have to agree with you. I think it is a bad set. And as much as I've looked at this set, I don't see anyone talking about it. And as much as I want to pick some up for investment, it just doesn't work with my business model. And so it's a good set, but it's also a bad set. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I like that. We're, we're in the end saying the same thing, but coming at it from a slightly different approach to then where we lined up and we're like, yep, that, that aligns. So uh, we like this set personally, but for investment, safe to say, neither of are going to pick this one up. Kevin, what's your all last set today? All right, David, my last set. Here it is. 76386 Hogwarts Polyjuice Potion Mistake. It's finally retiring at the end of this year. It ran a year longer than a lot of us were hoping. $20 for the little build and the four minifigures and the extra headpieces like the cat piece for Hermione, which is exclusive to this set. I'm 95% confident in that statement. For a long time, I was saying good set for a long time in my other videos when I'm watching and recording other people's interest in sets. It had a lot of good buzz, but that has completely died out. When this set went from $20 to $16 on Amazon, I know a number of us picked some up. I picked up five or six of them. And I think it's still at that price on Amazon and it's been months. And so clearly something has happened with this set. That extra year must have killed it. I'm surprised because it is the Harry Potter golden minifigure. You know, they did four or five sets with gold minifigures. You would think the Harry Potter one would be very popular. Maybe that's why there isn't much buzz on it anymore because everybody already has it. But I was good set for a while. Now I'm going with bad set, but it's more than bad set. I'm going with frustrating set. <laughs> 
because it really should be a good set and something's up. It just doesn't feel right. I don't think I'm going to do well on the ones that I got. I also really want to like this set, but I think you hit the nail on the head. Lego has way overproduced this. It seems strange that they would put the main character, Harry Potter himself, in a $20 set. You would think they would save that protagonist to put in a $150 set so that you really want to buy it. Now, I like this set. I think it's a great value for the price. Oh, uh, yeah. Not only in price per piece, but the tan pieces, those um, one by one by, I think they're six tall column pieces, very useful parts. Three sinks there perfectly match up with what we see in the movie. I think it looks phenomenal. Also, to get four minifigures in a $20 set, that's amazing value. And I think I will probably pick up one or two for myself. But for investment, just way, way too much supply out there. Well, you did a great job summarizing the value of this side build. And that was one thing I wanted to make sure I pointed out too, which is this is not a throwaway side build. I go back and forth on what is the selling point in this set, the four minifigures or the build itself. And you're right, this is designed to go with the other, what is it, eight or nine modular Harry Potter sets that you can build. This is absolutely designed to be the girls' bathroom in that large building. The sink pieces, not that common. They look great. The columns, as you said, the little crown molding pieces up here, this garage piece, yeah. obviously not used for that, but still a nice valuable piece. Really good overall side build. So yeah, in the future, we'll call this good set, bad set, and frustrating set. <laughs> we made a new category. So it's getting close to that time of year, October, November, and December is kind of an afterthought, but really the meat of the Lego investing calendar is October and November. I've done a little bit of reflection on my business, my inventory, and how I'm doing. I've decided to focus on three things this Q4. Number one, I'm going to clear out my spreadsheet of oddball sets, singles, onesies, and twosies, maybe sets that I wasn't sure about that I just bought a couple of. The second thing I'm doing is I'm going through my order history from last year from different retailers, and I'm taking note of when certain sets went on certain sales. So some sets start out at 20%. You're thinking, is this the best I'll see? And then a week later, oh, now it's at 30%. And maybe you buy there. And then a week later, oh, now it's at 40%. Well, I have a higher cost than everybody else. I better buy some more. I don't want to exhaust all my capital and miss out on opportunities. And then the third thing I want to focus on this year is going deep instead of wide. What that means is selecting a small number of sets, no more than maybe five to 10, and going very deep into those sets, as opposed to purchasing one of 40 different sets. So David, all three are great principles. I'll ask you a question. Principle number three. What's the advantage of doing that? The main one is time savings in terms of your spreadsheet and in terms of when it comes time to photograph, list, and sell your items. It's going to be way easier to sell 10 items 10 times rather than sell 100 items one time each. Exactly. And I think that's something all of us, when we get into this first, don't really grasp how much of a time saving and how important that is. You, know, you think to yourself like, yeah, I'm going to throw 50 sets on eBay or wherever and you know how hard can that be? But after a while, you think to yourself, you know, I just took the pictures and wrote up the description and I packaged up the set. And it'd be really nice if I could just cut and paste that whole process over and over and over as opposed to, okay, now I got to turn my mind to think about another set and what the price is going to be and go do the research on what the list it has and find the box that's the right size and get all the details. That really turns into a significant drag. So I am doing similar to you where I've got some ones and twos. And I also have some where I've gotten smart and said, I'm buying, you know, groups of them. So going in deep instead of wide. Yep. And you too, right there. Did you have a video where you said something like I sold my car so I could buy all these speed champion sets? Um, so technically true. I sold my car because it was broken down and needed to be <laughs> sold. But I did, in fact, net about a thousand dollars off of that. And I did, in fact, spend about a thousand dollars on Corvettes. So technically, I yes, video. I love that video. That was that was great. I, I put a smile on my face. I loved it. It was one of the first ones that I watched of yours. It was it was one of the ones that really stuck out. Right. Thank you. But yeah. Thank so you. I'm in the same boat. I've got some sets now where I'm like, all right, I want to clean up from the past. And some of them are like five, six, seven years old that I've just been lazy on saying, all right, let me sell them and clear them out. But every time I look at them, I'm just like, Ugh, because it's so much work for each individual set. So obviously don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't go all in in one set because mm -hmm. if you're wrong if, or if that one you know gets extended for a year or whatever, then it's going to get you. So you need to do some diversification. You need to play the field a little bit, but it's really nice when it comes selling season to be working and crafting up on 10 different sets as opposed to 30 or 40 or 50 different sets. 
And the, the quantity can be the same, but David's point is 100% on point that I think newbies don't realize until they experience the pain themselves the first time. Yeah, I hate to say it. Um, what's the saying? Failure is a great teacher. Yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've shipped out some sets where I spent too much on my shipping or I didn't arrange to have the right size box. Another big tip I could give if we are to give a number four is to think about my favorite word that's not actually a word co-listing ability. Can you list two or three sets and kill three birds with one stone? If you are going to do that with something like, say, Speed Champions, you're going to sell three cars together. Or with Brickheads, you're going to sell all three exclusive retiring Minecraft characters together. You need to have a box that fits them. This can be a great way to save both on your time and also on your per set shipping costs. You need to think about that. What sets will buyers want to purchase in bulk lots if you do want to go that route? And something else I want to mention is I've just gone through looking at brick set measures measurements in inches of each of my sets, as well as myself breaking out the tape measure, measuring the sets, figuring out what kind of boxes I'm going to need if I'm going to stack two or three of them, and then going on Uline and ordering the right size boxes. Or if you're at a smaller scale, maybe asking your neighbors or rifling through the recycling, but you need to have the right size boxes. And um, that's something I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but pro tip there. That is a good pro tip. I do something similar. I just make sure that my wife keeps ordering stuff off of Amazon so that every day I get a new supply of boxes that I can... <laughs> ship these in so we have a good laugh about that amazon's amazing having things come delivered to your door but no you're right on those points and here's my brickheads beast and bell i bought these they used to have the big 50 percent off tag and then members another 10 percent off so i think it was barnes and noble and so i bought them for five bucks each and why did i buy them because we like beauty and the beast our kids were young you know it's a nice movie and now when i look online if you sell them as a pair i'm in 10 bucks and it's about 60 bucks i think and wow. so i'm like hey i better sell these yeah individually it's not a big profit but still it'll be nice to uh get that return on investment but at the same time, these are my only two. So yes, I'm going to pair them up and I'm thankful that I only have to do one listing instead of two listings, but I'm not looking forward to putting that work in for one sell. And that's where also you need to uh, decide how much are you a collector and emotionally invested in certain sets <laughs> and how much are they just products you're selling online. Um, I myself am also a Lego fan. I do keep certain sets myself, but it's important to know what sets you're keeping what sets you're dumping. So the whole emotional versus let me be, you know, business smart. Is that something in your opinion that can be taught? Or is that just one of those that like, we all got to just live through it and kind of find our happy medium? I'm going to say more of the latter. Yeah, I would say more of the latter. Everybody's different in terms of their fandom, what they like, what they want to keep. Maybe there are certain sets that I have grown tired of looking at. First impressions matter. So things like box art, box size may matter. And certain sets I think sell themselves well with their boxes. Other sets really don't. Those are really good points. All right, Dave, we have less than a minute, so you better do a quick outro. But man, it's great how quickly we can just find subjects and like, you know, find interesting things. Like you and I could talk about this for hours. We would I very much like to, but Kevin does have to get going. And so we're going to cut this episode short. We'll be back soon with episode five. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Be sure to check out Kevin's channel. That will be linked in the description. Katie Experts Analytics. Good time. Yeah, thanks, Dave. As always, everybody, thanks for watching our fourth one as you can tell dave and i are really enjoying this and getting into a good groove and don't forget his channel too it is awesome if you haven't made it you are already on it